My name is Noah Syndergaard. I'm a right-handed pitcher for the New York Mets, and I really like to uh, embrace New York City. So New York is known for its food, so what's good here? Well, Jazelma and I probably come here once or twice per homestand, and we always start off with avocado toast. It's great because they add a little bit of sweet potato to it. So we're in the West Village, and, and you had mentioned in a previous conversation we had that this area is really special to you. Why is that? I like to just explore as much as I can. New York has a, a special place in my heart. I grew up in a small town, suburbia of Dallas, Texas. It's a very different lifestyle, so as soon as I Step foot in New York for the first time in 2013, I immediately fell in love with the buzz of the city. A lot of employees, they have to hit their numbers, and that's how their job performance is based off of. How do you hit your numbers? I really just focus on winning every pitch. There was a time I would start the game, and I'd be too fixated on what's going to happen in the future and kind of make me a little bit anxious. So what I do to simplify is I go out there and I try to win every single pitch that I throw. In terms of like individual statistics and like setting goals, I just try to go out there and be the, the best pitcher I can be because I try to set unrealistic numbers and I don't achieve them, then it just doesn't really look good. So earlier this year, you were on TV talking about stocks. It appears to have uh, been a, like a recent interest of yours. So how do you fold financial education into your day to day? So part of my, my morning routine uh, during the off season with my roommate is we'd make our heaping pot of coffee and sit on the couch and watch our daily financial talk shows. And although it still sounded like a foreign language to me, I'm trying to grasp it as, as much as I possibly can. There's a stat, 65% of people first learn about financial wellness and savings from their parents. Did you learn anything about saving from your mom and dad? Could you attribute that? that foundational yeah, learning from them? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think my, my parents did a really good job at, at raising me and teaching me to be responsible and the, and the value of a dollar. And so right now I'm still living that kind of frugalish lifestyle, not necessarily blown out of the water because I want to save up as much money as I possibly can, reach free agency, and then you know, talk where to go next. How have we done this whole interview? We haven't discussed the crudite yet. <laughs> Was it petrified wood? I guess first and foremost is trust, um, just the comfortability of like, the relationship that I have with that person. I want to make sure I can have constant communication with them. Multiple times a year we sit down and we talk about strategy, talk about savings, what we're going to do in terms of investments. The best thing about having them is I can go out there and focus on pitching and, and my career. I don't have to worry about um, the money side of things, so it's just uh, one less stress that I have. One thing that you just can't put a price on is my mother's love and affection. What can you get in New York for $20? You know, I'd probably pay it forward and uh, give it to somebody in need. I kind of gave up on shopping a while back because every time I go shopping, like, nothing ever fits me. I do what I can. Um, shoes, the same Your prop. outfit looks like it's fitting just fine today, so that's this good. This is the only one I have. <laughs> like, I want to play the game for as long as I can and make as much money as I possibly can. I always want to be prepared for tomorrow, and whether it's a career in finance or who knows, anything else. Or I want to be more multifaceted and different. I don't want to just be focusing on baseball. I want to branch out into other things. I'm also understanding that my career is very short-lived. It could end tomorrow. It could last another 20 years. But like post-career, I wouldn't mind just getting a, a house on Hermosa Beach right next to my agent and uh, my avocado tree, and I'll be happy as can be. Well, last year once the season ended, I immediately hopped on a plane and started my off-season. Um, this year I'll probably do the same thing, maybe have a little time off for myself. I'm not really sure where I would travel to, um, but that's definitely a must. Get back to the States and start preparing for next year. So you're a Virgo, huh? Mm -hmm. Leo's and Virgos, we, we, we probably should have ended this launch like 15 minutes ago. I'm surprised it lasted <laughs> that long.